Episode 8, First Impression and Unboxing of the 9 Bach Z10. Alright, after a lot of waiting, anticipation, and you know, a little bit of crazy craziness at the end of the uh, shipping process, it is finally here, the 9BOT Z10. And when I say finally, I really meant it. I put down a deposit at eWheels uh, at the end of July, and it's October 11th. So I basically waited 12 weeks for, to get this wheel. And I generally never pre-order anything, but for whatever reason, there just seemed to be a really extremely limited availability in the US for the production units of the Z10. So not counting the crazy individual who was willing to entrust their hard-earned money with the Alibaba exporter, there's just 150 of these production units in the US. So I guess I am happy to have one, finally. So unlike some of the other EUC nuts out there, this is only the second uh, electric unicycle I ever purchased. Uh, the first one I bought back in May with the IPS i5, with, which I have just enjoyed tremendously and have been riding all over the uh, city. And, and yes, I know these two electric unicycle is just about the most diametrically opposed uh, electric unicycle you can possibly get, both in terms of size and weight. But I do have a good reason for it. So I'm sure I'll get into it in uh, future reviews. So I was really torn between this and the Gateway M Super X, uh, which was faster with some of the owner who have the 100 volt version reporting speed up to and beyond 40 miles per hour. It also have a larger battery and it's based on a previous model, which means I had a more, much more predictable ride. So why did I choose the Z10, which is actually more expensive despite those you know, specification shortcoming. So I will explain as I unbox the Z10, which is why you are here. So it's really, uh, there, there were a lot of different opinion as to the ride quality of the Z10, but I think there is one thing that everyone all agree on, which is the um, design and quality of the manufacturing on the Z10. I mean, this is, from everything I heard, this is essentially the best, uh, best made um, scooter that you can possibly get. So, you know, even the packaging, this, you know, I mean, I don't have a lot of experience. However, the presentation of the packaging is wonderful. So, there is, um, we have the instruction, I guess. Well, we'll look at that later. And then, here is um, the, 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 the scooter itself. Um, I don't know what this guy is. I, so E-Wheel had thrown in some wrist guard. And these look like the additional padding that uh, they included with the model. And finally, we have the Z10 itself, which is very heavy. Oh my god. Ooh, this is one heavy scooter. Oh my god. Look at this thing. So, I mean, the design on this thing is just really, really badass. So I do have to say, the main reason why I chose the Z10 was the way it looks. I mean, this is just a beautifully designed scooter. So um, the other thing that I have watched you know, quite a bit of video of people reviewing the Z10 and riding it, and one thing I do notice is that people said that it's a little bit hard to turn it. Um, and from the video, it looks like you really have to lean into the scooter because of the greater weight of the wheel. So as it spin up, there's a lot more gyroscopic forces that you have to work against. 
but having rode a motorcycle quite a bit, um, that actually sound like it will be fun. So anyway, let's see. Oh my god, this thing is heavy. So it has a wonderful finished and um, here's the charger. Well, Jason had noted that the plug which included in this kit was not the correct one. But he also mentioned that there was going to be a hard um, extender because this guy apparently doesn't work very well. Uh, what else is in here? Let's see what's in this box. So, here is the this is the trolley and we have the mud guard oh. <laughs> smell of fresh uh, scooter this is great can't wait I'm gonna take some time and assemble this guy and uh, we'll give it a quick first ride. Looking forward to it. And while I, I'm at it, here's a quick comparison of the Z10 <laughs> versus my IPS i5. It is probably like three times the width. Um, it's not that much higher. Uh, the wheel is actually, you know, obviously significantly larger. Um, and the weight of this thing is just tremendous. This is a very heavy scooter. Okay, so we have the, uh, the fender, and uh, which have a nice um, reflector strip. And then we have the, um, the trolley kit. Um, I think I'm going to leave. I, I really like this kind of you know, Batman tumbler look. So I'm gonna leave the wheel exposed. I'll, I'll leave, I don't think I'm gonna be riding, you know, in the wet anytime soon, just yet, now until I get used to this unicycle. So I'm gonna start with the trolley kit. This would certainly make it easy. Um, there's no lock on this. Conveniently, they included an Allen key. So from what I have seen, it's just a matter of um, having to take these bolts off. Okay, I got the trolley handle on it. Um, there's actually some extra screw left over. It's a little bit funny because the screw end um, is hanging out on the interior. I can see that it's sticking out. Uh, but, you know, they're not close to the wheel, so I guess that's okay. The next thing is um, these additional pads uh, that they give you. Uh, which I will also apply. There's two um, that goes on what looks like either edges on the underside, and then there are two that goes on the upper portion. So one right here, and then the other one goes on the other side. Seem to be pretty secure. So, just to show you what I meant. So you can kind of see here is um, there's two side, one side which um, I have applied. Um, so there's a, a raised sharp edge, and the the other side is the way it is. So it also kind of overhangs, I don't know whether why they made it this way, o also overhangs the light. Um, it can't come up any further because this is the port and needs to peel, peel back. So I guess it's just, I don't know, maybe I'll trim that back later. I think I can do that pretty easily.
Next is applying the, um, the I, I don't know, the lower edge guard, I guess. This is also made out of a foamy material with double stick on it. There's a um, little bit of overlaps. I can see a few of the screw getting covered. Um, but, you know, the sticky tape they use doesn't seem to adhere too strongly. So I think you could peel it uh, pretty easily and they have a raised edge on all these rubber bumper. So it's not, I imagine it would be hard, it, it wouldn't be hard to, to remove these uh, protective edges. So this is a pretty good fit. I'm happy with it. And it seems to be doing a good job protecting it. Okay. This is getting a little bit long, so I'll make a separate video on my initial experiences riding and learning the Z10. But from a built and design point of view, this is just a great wheel. The whole assembly felt solid with no flex at any point, and the seam between the panels are either hidden through clever design or hairline tight. Even the surface inside the wheel well is finished and clean, with the only exception being the exposed screw head attaching the trolley assembly, but that's really nitpicking. And you can tell that they had an actual industrial designer who really scrutinized every detail of the Z10. Even the soft padding is shaped to the wheel with obvious thought behind functional and aesthetic requirements. And although I would likely never understand the engineering side of how the Z10 was designed, this level of care and attention really inspired confidence in this wheel. The Z10 sets a new bar in terms of production and design, and regardless of how you feel about the ride quality and performance of this wheel, I hope that this wheel inspire all the other manufacturers to push for the same quality, since in the end, it would be us, the enthusiasts, that benefit. Thank you for watching, I hope this was interesting. Please subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed it. Thank you!